Although much has already been said about uh, the King of Pop's complicated legacy, a new podcast highlights dozens of original interviews with people who witnessed the Michael Jackson story unfold from up close. It's called Think Twice, Michael Jackson, and it's uh, hosted by journalists and podcaster Leon Nafok and hip-hop radio veteran Jay Smooth. Leon and Jay join us now. Thank you both for Good being morning. with us. Thank you. Great to be here. So tell us, tell us what you guys are discussing that we might not have heard about Michael Jackson in the past. What have you uncovered? What have we uncovered? Well, you know, the story is so well known in certain ways. Everyone has a bunch of memories about Michael Jackson. They remember the moonwalk. They remember Billie Jean on MTV. Uh, the trick of the, of, the, of the podcast is to go deeper than those big iconic moments and to talk to people who saw little corners of the Michael Jackson story. Uh, for example, the sculptor who designed the image on the cover of the History album or the bodyguard who helped protect Michael Jackson in the final years of his life. Uh, people who you never have heard being interviewed a million times before uh, and who remember things uh, that maybe most of us have never heard of. So, Jay, yeah, one of those things might be uh, something that, that people I don't think are familiar with is the film that he did with Stephen King that sounded like he was touching on something that was going on in his life at the time. Yeah, this is one of the many remarkable stories we found that uh, Michael Jackson, before any public allegations had come out, sought out Stephen King to help him write a, sor a sort of horror short film whose premise was that Michael was this man out in the edge of town who had a relationship with all the town's children that the parents didn't like. And the parents were all marching over to his house with pitchforks demanding that he stop having this relationship with their kids. And then Michael is explaining, no, we ha I have a good relationship with the kids. So it was a fascinating insight into uh, Michael ha seeming to have these issues on his mind before the public knew they Has were Has that issues. film ever seen the light of day anywhere? Well, there's two versions of it. There was one name, Is It Scary, that uh, ended production because the first allegations came out. And then Michael brought it back a few years later, and it was named Ghosts. So you can, if you look for Ghosts, you can find that. Uh -huh. and, and there's pieces of Is It Scary on YouTube as well. So, Leon, uh, of these new interviews of people that we might not have heard of before, did they have, what was their uh, take on Michael Jackson? Was it mostly positive, or did some of them talk about the allegations against him? Oh, I mean, we get into the allegations very frontally in the show. I mean, our goal going into this was never to relitigate the evidence uh, on this accusation or that accusation, but we did want to take a look at how these allegations were kind of processed in real time mm. in our culture. You know, like we all remember the 90s as this period when there were these allegations swirling. But speaking for myself, I didn't quite realize until we started working on this that there were these discrete moments in, you know, in Michael's life when these allegations were coming forward. And we were so curious, like, how did we as a culture uh, react in the moment? How did we move on? How did Michael move on? And so I think, you know, you'll hear in the interviews that we did, people are, are, are talking very, uh, again, frontally about what that was like. Um, you're not going to find some new bombshell in here about, oh, well, you know, it turns out he did do this or he didn't do that. But I think, you know, we tried to make this almost like a cultural history of the Michael Jackson phenomenon. And you just can't tell that story without getting into these allegations that really defined his life after yeah, a certain point. Yeah. So just so no, no matter what he did or didn't do, there's no way to put a, a positive spin on having kids sleep in your bed. Um, in this day and age, may, maybe he would have been canceled. I, I don't know, but we all kept on listening to his music. Why? I think that's one of the questions we try to take on. I think there are many of us who grew up with Michael all of our lives and have a relationship with him where we almost feel like he's a part of the family. And then we also have to grapple with the possibility he may have done very dark things. And I think we culturally as a society our understanding of those issues has evolved our understanding of fame celebrity so many of these questions michael as leon said michael's story is sort of a social history of how we all relate to these issues and continue trying to reckon with it and i think that's what the series explores from many different angles do you think there will ever be i mean he there's certain people that are iconic celebrities and everything is so distilled now that you wonder if anyone will have the type of celebrity that michael jackson had i mean yeah. I, I think the short answer is no jay i don't know if that's what you were going to say but i think we we agree that michael jackson was as big a star as we're ever going to have and in the years since our monoculture has fragmented in so many little pieces that right. 
It's going to be very hard for anyone to really get to those heights and be that famous and that impactful. Yeah, and I think at the same time, Michael is sort of a, the most extreme canary in the coal mine for the life that we all try to navigate now in this social media world of having our public life and our private life and sort of maintaining this duality. I, you know, I think we saw in profoundly beautiful and harmful ways how that could affect somebody in his life before any of us were dealing with it. Uh, t obviously, he was the star of the Jackson 5. I I'm just curious to know what was the biggest impact on him being I don't know, let's just say very different than the other than the others. Uh, was it his father who kind of ruled with an iron fist? Was it just excess success and nobody to say no? What was it? I think there's different ways you could look at that, certainly. And we go pretty deep into the story of his early days, um, including performing at venues in Chicago, like uh, the mm. Regal Theater, which mm -hmm. was pivotal for him. But in those days, certainly his father had a very heavy hand, to put it mildly, and uh, how he was shaping his children into a band that could get this family out of Gary, Indiana, into a better life. And that's definitely one of the questions we grapple with is uh, how much compromise, how 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 uh, how rigorous a treatment of your kids is justified under those circumstances, and what what yeah what are the what are the what are the prices that you pay for fame, and how much of it is worth it, how much residual damage to yourself and people around you is worth it. I think those are questions that right. we go into pretty deeply. Well, mm. Leon and Jay, we thank you both for being with us. Uh, the podcast is Think Twice. Michael Jackson. You can find it on Audible and Amazon Music, and you can follow both Leon and Jay uh, on social media. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Guys.